Now, you've been causing, Jeremy, another stir online with new military-leaked UAP footage. This new one you've dubbed the jellyfish. But tell us here on the 6 o'clock show why this new sighting is so important. Right, yeah, so this has actually been causing a stir, not just online, but around the world and also within the Department of Defense. This is the first time in history the public gets to see what they call an incursion of a military base by a UAP or UFO in a conflict zone. So this one is so important because, first of all, it's very strange looking. They didn't know what to identify it. They call it a UAP. They, it could do advanced maneuvers, but it's not ours, it's not Russia's, it's not China's. So they don't know whose it is, so they call it a, a UAP or UFO. The reason this one was called the jellyfish was because of the maneuvers that it did. It was able to descend into the water for 17 minutes with no inertial effect. This thing came up out of the water and shot off. We don't have anything that can do that like this. So this is a real head scratcher. Now, Jeremy, I'm sure with your line of work, you are inundated with emails and videos of, of people seeing, having sightings of UAPs. But how do you make sure like videos like this, like the jellyfish, are legit and not a hoax? Yeah. Right. So that's a really important step in the process. You know, they say extraordinary claims, you know, needs an extraordinary, what I say, investigation. So so that's what I did. My, my partner in investigation is George Knapp. He's one of the old school investigative reporters that has been on this topic from the very beginning. How we know that the, the footage we get is authentic is that, first of all, this is a leak. This is a leak within the intelligence community within the United States. So when that comes to us, we need to vet it. So it took us three and a half years to really know for sure that this footage was not only hoaxed, but additionally, it was a credible threat. It was considered a credible threat by our military. So this is not like your friend with an iPhone standing out at a, at a, at a fair, right? Yeah. This is a big deal. This is an incursion. And on that note, last year, a U.S. government whistleblower called David Grush, well, he came forward about a secret U.S. government program around reverse engineering alien spacecrafts. Let's hear what he and members of the U.S. Air Force had to say. The technology that we faced was far superior than anything that we had. And you could put that anywhere. We have nothing that can stop in midair and go the other direction, nor do we have anything that can like in our situation, come down from space, hang out for three hours and go back up. We would see these objects uh, being at 0, 0.0 Mach, that's zero airspeed, over certain pieces of the ground. So what that means, just like a river, if you throw a bobber in, it's going to float downstream. These objects were staying completely stationary in Category 4 hurricane winds. Like George Knapp breaking Area 51, he's the reason I knew about that. Uh, biologics came with some of these recoveries. Yeah. A very powerful testimony there from David Jeremy. How has the Congress and the Senate dealt with this and these revelations? Right, well, as you can see from that footage, it is a UFO revolution. That, that is from a Tubi special, the, the platform Tubi. And I'm featured in it. It shows the work that we did to get this in front of Congress. And, and to be honest, they're pissed. They're pissed. They want answers. They know they've been lied to, not just our country, but your country as well. So that's the issue. So how they're responding to it is they're digging for answers. They're fighting for answers. They want to know the truth that our government has about UFOs. They know they've been lied to. Now, I'm sure there are many other testimonies out there. I'd like to get your personal opinion on this, Jeremy. Do you think David Grush's public stance on UAPs has encouraged other whistleblowers to come forward? That's a big deal, and I have direct insight into that. Whistleblowers come forward to me and to George Knapp. We have our show weaponized, and we have exposed some of that. Like the head of the DIA, which is an intelligence agency, said, we have a spacecraft, and we've been able to get inside of it. That was exposed on, on my show. So yes, other whistleblowers are encouraged by David Grush. And also how we treat whistleblowers in the United States is really important, especially on this topic, to make sure that information does come forward to Senate and to Congress. So that's what we're seeing, is a lot of encouragement. And on that note, supposedly those in the know, they refer to aliens as non-human intelligence. Why is that? What does it actually mean, Jeremy? Yeah, that's really important, and thank you for highlighting that. So when you say the word alien, it makes me think of, you know, little green men from another planet. We don't know where UFOs are from. 
We don't know who are controlling them. They also testified in Congress, David Grush did, that there were what he called biologics. So when you say non-human intelligence, you're just not making an assumption that you understand the origin of where this other intelligence is from. But we know it's not non-human. And, and we know there's a biological aspect. Now, you know, potatoes, potatoes, you could call them aliens, but it's a better way to say non-human intelligence. Okay. Now, if everything around UFOs and non-human intelligence is true, why do you think governments are so scared and keeping this a secret from mm -hmm. all of us? True. Yeah, governments are not scared about this. What they want is a technological advantage. When we get a crash or a crash retrieval program, they're trying to reverse engineer or exploit derivative technologies. They're trying to see what we can do to get an edge in combat and warfare. It's national security. I understand that. UFOs are considered higher than weapons of mass destruction because of the propulsion systems. So look, bottom line is our governments are trying to do their best usually, but what they're trying to do is get an advantage because everybody, everybody knows this is real within government who has ever dealt with this. And they know that it's something that we can learn from, but they're not gonna go around screaming that this is real and, and destigmatizing it until we know what's going on. Um, now, looking ahead to the rest of the year, what developments do you predict in the field of UAP disclosures? Well, look, man, I, I don't have a crystal ball. I cannot predict the future. I don't even know when my alarm clock's going to go off, even when I set it. But what I can say for sure is that people have been encouraged. They have come forward to me and to George Knapp. We are getting them in front of Congress. We are getting them in front of the Senate Intelligence Committee. And that information, some of it, will be going public. So my prediction for 2024 is what I know is going to happen. More people are coming forward with firsthand direct knowledge of these government programs reverse engineering UFOs. Are there any revelations, Jeremy, that you think the public should be prepared for in 2024? Yeah, if you don't know by now, then it's time to catch up. And if you don't catch up, you're going to be left behind. This is not something that should be shrouded in secrecy. This is not something that should be overlaid with stigma. This is a real issue, and people are, on a daily basis, encountering UAP or UFOs in our military and in other militaries around the world. So people should really know is they got to look up. They have to understand this is coming, whether they like, they like it or not. Fascinating. Jeremy, thank you so much for thank joining you, us Jeremy. on the six o'clock show. Give it up for Jeremy in sunny LA. And you can listen to Jeremy and George Knapp's podcast, Weaponized, wherever you get your podcasts.